Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and comparison, I listed as a versus, of the Harbor Freight Quinn uh, flip switch reversible snap ring pliers. These on sale are about $13, so they're kind of pricey, but they do seem pretty well built, but they do have a couple of uh, issues, as well as a couple of nice features, so they're kind of hit and miss. For the price, I would still end up going with the Napa KD Professional just because they are a bit heavier duty. These are also the same as the high tech brand. And uh, basically, these are a bit more professional. But as far as the Harbor Freight Quinns, they're really not that bad. So these are essentially a copy of what have been the high tech ones. There's also these which have the flip lever. This is the same style as the channel locks where they use this type of flip lever for the reversing, where the Harbor Freight uses a large cast zinc flip lever. And I do appreciate that. So how these work is there's just a standard snap ring plier. You do have a what's known as a honeycomb spring in between the handles. And it works like a standard set of snap ring pliers. And then you just flip the switch, and then you just squeeze them, and then it switches some pins inside. And I'll open this up, and hopefully I don't have a disaster. So we can see how this one works. I did have a disaster one, so I tried doing it on those, so I won't do it on those. But overall, they do work pretty well. The one thing I will mention is this flip lever is mighty stiff, uh, and that's one criticism I'd have, but they do, uh, it does operate quite well. The one thing I'll mention is due to their design, it does add quite a bit of bulk to the width right there at the pivot, where the channel lock and high-tech design you can see, even though this is a much larger set of snap ring pliers, the head on the smaller size Harbor Freight is still larger than, or wider than it is on these, even though these are a huge pair of snap ring pliers. So I did want to mention that. The other thing about these Nappas, and this has a huge ratchet mechanism, is the Nappa switch is really easy to flip. You do have to kind of push it, release it, and push it again to get it to reverse direction because it will initially get caught up, but it works very well. It's a very smooth action. But I will say that the Harbor Freight, you don't even have that stop. You can just flip this lever and squeeze it, and it will it's just immediately change direction. Not too bad. Now, one of the big criticisms I have is with the overall quality. Whoop. Let me reverse these again. And that's because they use a lot of cast zinc. These main jaws are cast zinc, and they have holes in them, I assume, so you can uh, hang them up or make it easier to hang up. But I didn't really like that they had large holes in the jaws when it's cast zinc, although it's still a pretty good cross-section through there. So it's really not that big of a deal. But I do like heavier-duty ones that are steel. As we can see, this is zinc, and... Uh, it's either sticking to the pin that's actually inside the zinc, or if I push it over, it wants to stick to the steel handles. Not like having steel jaws like on these style. And so I do really like the steel jaws. Another nice aspect, and I thought that what was incredibly wise of Harbor Freight, was to use standard 330 seconds bits. So these bits right here, in such as in the Harbor Freights, work just fine in the high tech in the Napa and I thought that was very wise that they didn't use custom sizing for these pins so that you can buy you know Napa pins or pins from anybody and they will fit really wise choice there these the Harbor Freights come with five sets of snap ring pins including a straight set of large diameter pins here. And if I didn't mention, one of the reasons that these hex pins are so nice is that when you use snap ring pliers, obvious, uh, excuse me, oftentimes, you'll get the edge right here will actually get kind of worn out, and then the snap ring tips will slip, and then you start having issues. Actually, let me go pick up a pair. That's what generally happens on more simple pairs like this. Even though these are cheap and pretty reliable, once the tips start to wear, you have to grind them down some to get a new sharp edge so the snap ring doesn't slip off. The hex ones are really nice because you can just, ro on the straight ones, you can just rotate them around to another flat, which is, 
uh, a 60 degree difference and then have access to another sharp edge. So I thought that was quite wise. Let's show these other pins that we picked up here. We have straight medium, straight small, and then we have right angle medium and right angle small. They did not come with any large right angles and they did not come with any 45 degree angles. Actually, let me get the grub screws here. And of course, the Allen wrench. So initially, I thought it didn't come with an Allen wrench, but it did right here. And uh, it's pretty nice, or I should say nicely small. It's nice that they came with an Allen wrench, but it is just microscopic. It's like the same size as these. However, the shank diameter of this Allen wrench is different from the hex diameter. So it's just, it's not like one of these bits right here that's just been ground down. And they did wisely give you a couple extra grub screws, which I really did appreciate. The Allen wrench on these is 3 30 seconds, where the shank diameter of the bits is, excuse me, the Allen wrench is 5 64 The diameter on these bits is 3 30 seconds. 5 64 is real close to two millimeters. So, I mean, it's nearly identical. Uh, to within a few thousandths of an inch, so it's real hard to tell whether it's metric or standard, but that's a, just such a big deal that they work with these, and I thought that was, it was one of the wisest choices they could have made. The only thing I would have added to this set really would be something like this, where if they would have included some of these 45 degree angle bits, that would have been real handy, and those are included with the Napas, and they are a little bit more expensive. Uh, but I would have really appreciated that if they include, because oftentimes 45 degrees is really what you need when a snap ring's inside something so that you can have, get that magnet, the snap ring pliers can be at a slight angle so you can get out a snap ring that's inside somewhere because obviously if it's a right angle, you can't get at it. If they're straight, you're kind of angling the tips in the edge of the snap ring and they're always slipping out. So having the 45 degree tips would have been quite wise of them. Fortunately, you can just pick up tips from a Napa set. And they do, I actually seen these in the store, these little packages sold alone. Um, and then get a pack of nicer tips for the Harbor Freights. And yes, this little flip lever here is much easier to use than the traditional style where it's like these where you have to go in and you have to push but one button one way and another button the other way or you know this one up and that one down although this is a very robust structure now as far as some of the differences in uh, build quality one of them I did notice was the handle thickness these are the equivalent size as we can see here mid size and if we take a look at the thickness of the handle here uh, it's about there we go 137 and so the steel on these, let me get into a good flat spot here, is not much, 17 thousandths, but when you put it next to each other, it actually kind of looks significant. And furthermore, one other little thing that I did notice about the Harbor Freights here is the fact that this, I assume, you know, and as you use tools, sometimes little screws like this will get loose, and it has two little hex screws. Fortunately, they size them to be for that uh, 564 so you can actually use the little allen wrench that comes with the set to make sure that the screw is tight now this is a, a, a 564 allen wrench and it's so close to two millimeter that you can't really tell whether it really is a imperial or fractional size here we have a two millimeter allen wrench and it also is uh, has just about as much play as the 564th Allen wrench so don't really know if those are metric or imperial fasteners I assume that they're metric but it is just such a great feature that you can easily tighten these with the Allen wrench that comes with the the tool and I don't know if that was intentional or otherwise let me clean some of this stuff up here and I'll open these up and show you guys how this little mechanism works inside and before I do that, I just realized here's a couple of the Napa bits. And uh, I totally forgot that they actually have two bits here. Let me put it in. We have one that is like a just a light 15 degree angle. And then they have one that's steeper, like at 30 degrees or 45 degrees. And so they have two different options there. And these are actually critical. I've used both these sizes a lot. And I had mentioned they just had these, but I forgot they also have these 15 degree ones. So it would have been nice. Harbor Freight could have charged another dollar or two. And included a huge array of different 
uh, styles of bits and really made them quite useful. Anyway, let me get this cleaned up and we'll look inside them. Quickly here, I did want to mention that it does come with a little pouch that holds all the bits. And just to show what the size difference from a standard size and large, there is a standard size pin. These are the size of the pins that come with those large ones. So there is, when you get a big set of snap ring pliers, you get really large, strong pins. In Video Magic here, these are the kind of snap rings that you use with large pins. And those other pliers are ratcheting. When you're working with snap rings like these, these things can get outright dangerous. They are, have just so much spring tension on them that if, you know, the little pin or something were to break, these would probably cut you if they hit you. And yeah, these are large. All right, here we go. Disaster time. Let's see if we can't get this thing apart. If I, can get... I do like that they have some little, uh, they stamp to broaden out the little edge there where the spring is held so that the spring doesn't want to fall out quite as easily. That was another wise choice. We'll take the little Allen wrench that it came with. Let me get these little parts out of the way. And let's see if we can't make a disaster here. Oh, it will want to go to that size. There we go. Or that side to the external setting. Definitely some Loctite in there. What's going on? Interesting. It's actually... I was mentioning using this little wrench to keep these screws from coming out, but man, they are fully loaded with Loctite. I don't think these things are going to come loose by themselves. Very smart. Let's get that little screw out of here. And this is what we have inside. Very interesting. We've got a very odd type of little clock spring in there. which engages this little metal piece. And that is the locking cam, or the actual locking dog. Interesting that they got, whoop, there goes parts. Okay, we have it all in parts now. To tell you the truth, I'm just taking me a minute to actually figure out how this thing works. There is another little section right here where that little black piece is the ball detent. We can see that in the arms that we have steel inserts. Let's make sure that they're actually steel. They are to help reinforce right where the locking dogs sit into to help reinforce it. I think that's a good idea. So how does, let me give, take a second here. Here we are, I finally figured it out. It took me a minute, but we can see, let me get this. We do have a steel center post that holds these together. But what we can see is here's the bottom one and there's the cutout. Here is the top unit and it actually has a cutout in a different direction. So we can see that those little leg springs, or those very oddly shaped springs in there are actually pointing different directions. So how that works is both of these jaws, let me pull this out, are exactly the same. We can see that when they manufacture them, they're only manufacturing one jaw and then they just take one and flip it over and then they sit on top of each other. So what's happening here when you're running it in the, this isn't gonna be the greatest explanation because I'm still having a little bit of trouble. Mechanics, <laughs> I do a lot of mechanics, but this type of stuff sometimes is just a little bit weird. Um, the handles are also ex stamped exactly the same, but when they're put together, we can see we have a cutout on one side, this one cutout points one direction. The, second cutout points a second direction. That's how it determines left or right. So if I take these hemostats and this little locking dog, this little, uh, there we go. Th that little tip right there is what rides in the spring. And what that spring is doing is pushing this in and out. So how this works is when we have the locking dog, it slides through this top slot, one of these slots in the handle. So that's how the handle is attached whoop, attached to the jaws. And then this little thing, if we can get it to cooperate here, there we go, sits in a little groove here. So what ends up happening is when you switch one direction, what happens is one on the top slips into that little slot that's in this jaw and hides away. 
That way these jaws can move independently of each other. There we go. Like so. And then when you flip direction, so this one would be retracted. But then on the bottom side, God, this does not want to cooperate. When you flip it, this little, come on now. There we go. This little dog, kind of like a ratchet paw, if we can get some light in here. There we go. Slides into the groove, but we can see how thick it is. It actually is getting caught halfway between that groove. Oh, it's not getting caught at all. Instead, it slides into the groove and attaches to one of the jaws. So what has, ends up happening when you flip from forward to reverse is one, one of these jaws is moving outward and the other one is moving inwards. And that's why it shows one jaw, like when you're doing internal, like the left jaw seems to be operating. When you do external, the right jaw seems to be operating because it's alternating between what handle uh, the jaws are actually locked into by when you flip that lever, this thing, this, one of these flips in, another one flips out. So even though it's not the greatest explanation, at least uh, you do have some idea of how this does operate. And the jaw that has pressure, I assume, is the uh, why they have the steel insert. And when it retracts into just the uh, zinc portion right here, there isn't any load on that dog. So that's why they don't have to worry about putting steel on that side. So anyway, sorry about the less than optimal explanation, but I always thought these things were kind of neat and wanted to show... Uh, how this Harbor Freight worked. And I'm sure there'll be some viewers who do understand these mechanics a little better than I do. And even though those are a few small parts, actually when you take it apart, all you end up with is this and this. You never need to take those springs out. You have a couple of washers. One's on the bottom. This one ended up on the top side. And then of course the jaws themselves. So it's kind of nice that you can take it apart just using the Allen wrench that it came with. It was surprising how tight. This screw was also super duper tight in there. But I don't see any evidence of actual damage to the threads, nor do I see any Loctite. We can see it got stuck on the Allen wrench. It was just super tight in there. I don't know if there was a burr or if that was tapped specifically just a tiny bit smaller just to uh, uh, give this a little extra bite. A couple other little things I noticed. The little uh, cutout that is on these is actually for this little detent that they put. or It's not a detent. It's just a raised up area. So when this is rocking back and forth, it keeps it from wanting to travel too far, just like so. The other thing I was going to mention is when you are reassembling this unit, uh, the one thing I can mention or say here, if I can get that junk out of the way, uh, let me get some light. Here is some light. We can see that that little spring right there. That little spring forms a track. See, there's a little track and the little tip of the ratchet paw or of the locking paw rides in between those two pieces of wire. So one thing to make note of when you do take it apart is to make sure to rotate this properly so that the little tip will sit in between that little groove. Otherwise they will not work properly. The only other thing to mention is that when you install these, this little arc part points is points inwards. And that way you won't have any trouble getting it back together besides it being small parts. Anyway, that's the end of another review and comparison of the Harbor Freight Quinn thumb lever reversing mid-size snap ring pliers. And overall, they're really not that bad for $13, especially when I do see that they put some steel inside of the jaws there. But... It would have been nice if they went, would have gone with actual steel jaws, although they probably save quite a bit of money. The reason cast zinc, once again, cast zinc is used in so many products is it's the closest metal that behaves like a plastic when you're molding, where you can get high definition. And of course, it's a metal, so it's much stronger. The only issue with zinc is it melts at about 800 degrees. So you can melt zinc with high temp soldering irons and, of course, plumbing torches. You wouldn't have to worry about it on a set of pliers like this. It is kind of a brittle metal, but it's much more of a concern when they, because of how many padlock manufacturers really like to use zinc. Anyway, that's uh, it for another Catus Maximus review. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Catus Maximus out.